Hi everyone, welcome back to my short radio tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to perform data integration using Harmony. We know our single cell RNA sequencing data have batch effect. The batch effect could be resulted from different samples, different technology to prepare the data set. So we need to correct the batch effect for better data integration. In my previous video, I showed you how to use the standard threat integration method. Today I'm going to show you how to use Harmony to integrate your data set. After watching my video, you will realize the Harmony method is quicker and faster, and also it is very easy to use. So first we need to load our packages Surat, Tidyverse, and Harmony. If you haven't installed the Harmony package, you can just go to Tools, Install Package, then type Harmony. You can find the Harmony link I installed, because I installed it already, so I just need to load the package. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use the GSE 132.771 dataset again. In my first short video, I showed you how to download the dataset and read it into R. So today we are going to use the data set from three healthy donors. And the data set contains all the cell types in the healthy lung. And you can find the data set as AML01, AML02 and 3. So let's read the data into R. So you can see in our data window, we have three large DGC matrix data set named as AML1, 2, and 3. So now we can create sort object for three data set. And again, we keep genes that have at least three cells expression, and the cells that have at least 200 gene expression. Uh, importantly here, we use the project name NML1 for the first data set. This is important for batch correction. So let's create uh, the first sort object. Then we can have a look at the metadata for NML1. You can see the row names are the cell buckles. We have the origin ident. AML1, we have the N count and the N feature RNA. So now we can create a threat object for AML2 and AML3. So now you can see we have three threat objects. We can merge them to one threat object as AML. So we don't need uh, the AML1, AML2, and AML3 anymore, so we can remove them. So now you can see we only have the AML threat object in the data window. And we can use the percentage feature set function to calculate the percentage of mitochondria DNA. So we can have a look at the metadata for NML. You can see now we added the percentage of mitochondria DNA into the metadata. And in the origin ident, the first data set was labeled as AML1, and the second one will be AML2, and the third one will be NML3. 
So next we can perform the quantity control. We can use the violin plot function to look at the features for n feature, n counter RNA and the percentage mitochondria DNA. So let's zoom in. You can see in feature RNA has the perfect wiring shape. For quality control, we use the wiring plot. It is easier for you to understand how we subset the cells. Normally, we keep cells in this wiring shape. So you can see for M features, we can keep cells below 4000. And the N count RNA, we can keep cells below uh, 20,000 for percentage of mitochondria DNA, we can use uh, 10%. So let's use those parameters to perform the, the quantity control. And also we only keep the cells that have N features bigger than 500. So we can subset the cells. Now we read the data in and created the AML threat object and also performed the quality control. So next step, we can just perform a threat standard workflow analysis to check if there are batch effects in those three data set. For the standard workflow, we normalize the data then find the variable features, then skew the data. Next, we run PCA. So we use the elbow plot to check the, the PCA numbers to make sure we include enough pieces for the downstream analysis. So you can see the elbow plot. If we use uh, uh, PC 10 to 20, we will be OK. So let's just use PC 30 for the downstream analysis. So next step, we run UMAP, then find the neighbors. And finally, we can find the canisters. So you can see we have 25 canisters in the merged data set. We can uh, use the feature plot function to see the cell types. We know we can use four markers to identify epithelial cells, immune cells, mesenchymal cells and uh, endocellular cells in the lung. Let's run the feature plot function. We can zoom in, you can see. Here are the epithelial cells. No cell canisters are immune cells. And then these three canisters are mesenchymal cells, and here are the endocellular cells. Now we know the cell types, we can use the dim plot function to have a look at the cell canisters. So we can group the cells by their origin ident. In this way, we can label the cells to see which sample they come from, and also we can see the cell canisters. We can zoom in again, you can see on the right hand side we have 25 cell canisters. On the left hand side we can see the cells from three different samples. AML1 was labeled in red color, 2 was labeled in green color, and 3 was labeled in blue color. You can clearly see there are batch effects between three samples. We know no cells are immune cells. You can clearly see cells were not integrated among three samples. 
and in this cell canister, we don't have cells from sample 1. So this is the reason we need to perform data integration. So we perform the, the standard worker flow analysis to show the batch effect. Next, we can use the harmony to correct the batch effect. So this method is very easy. You can see the worker flow here. We just add the run harmony step between run PC and run UMAP. The rest the analysis are the same as the standard workflow analysis. So we can start uh, the data normalization again from AML threat object and we name it as NML Harmony. The next we can find the variable features, skew the data, run PCA. After PCA, we can run Harmony. We need to tell the Harmony function that we want to correct the batch effect between three samples. We know from the metadata, we can differentiate them from the origin ident and the label labeled as AML1, AML2, and 3. So let's run Harmony to correct the batch effect. Okay, it is done, so we can run UMAP again. Now we need to use the reduction method as harmony. After UMAP, we can find the neighbors and find the clusters. And again, we need to specify the reduction method is harmony. So you can see we have uh, 25 cell canaster again. Now we can use the dim plot function to look at the cell canasters. Let's zoom in. You can see on the right hand side we still have the 25 cell canasters. And on the left hand side image you can see now cells from different samples were integrated very well. So we can plot the integrated cell canasters as plot 2 and our standard workflow analysis as plot 1. Then we can compare the cells from the standard workflow analysis and the cell clusters after integration with harmony. As to mean, so you can see on the right hand side are the cell canasters were integrated using harmony function. And on the left hand side, if we just use the standard workflow, you can see cells from different uh, samples were not uh, integrated. So from today's video tutorial using harmony, I hope you understand why we need to perform data integration for our single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. I'm going to stop from here for today's demonstration. If my video could help your data analysis, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm going to make more videos about the data integration with different methods. Hope to see you in my next video.